Welcome to Tales from the Graves, coming to you from the beautiful market town of Kendal in South Lakeland. A town made internationally famous for its snuff manufacturing, for its famous Kendal mint cake eaten on top of Everest by Tensing and Hillary, but also famous for some very, very ghostly tales. Welcome to Tales from the Graves, coming to you from the beautiful market town of Kendal. Behind me is the old Westland County Hospital. The hospital has an intriguing ghost story. In fact, one of the most interesting ghost stories you will ever, ever hear. So let's have the whole story of the ghost of the Westland County Hospital. So our story starts way back in 1963 on a beautiful August evening. John Burroughs lived in the city of Preston. His mother was in a care home here in Kendall. Every Monday, he would go and see her. He would drive down the M6. He would then make his way for the villages of Hincaster, Natland and Sedgwick, and then into the town of Kendall. It was a beautiful August evening, that uh, in 1963, and he took the vehicle down the M6, came off at Crooklands, and made his start of the journey into Kendall. And on arriving in Hincaster, he saw on the road verge a young lady with a white dress, a blue cardigan, saturated in blood. She was obviously very badly injured. John slowed the car down, wound his window down and shouted, Are you okay, love? No, no. Take me to the hospital, shouted the young girl. John opened the passenger seat door. She jumped in and he put the seatbelt on her. He then realised it was a race against time because she was bleeding very badly. He made his way through Sedgwick, through Natland and straight towards Kendall, going for the town centre, through three red lights. At the same time, his passenger was groaning and bleeding terribly. He arrived here at the Westland County Hospital. He reversed into the parking lot, and before he turned the engine off, his passenger had taken the seatbelt off, opened the door, and she limped across the car park and straight into the casualty department. John saw her enter. He locked his car door. He followed her into the casualty department. And when he got there, he saw a nurse. Nurse, how is she? Who, said the nurse. I just brought a young girl in here. She was very badly injured. No, 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 there's no one here, I can assure you. There is. I brought a young girl. She was bleeding very badly. The doctor, the casual doctor arrived and said, uh, can we help you, sir? Yes, I've just brought a young girl in here. She had a white dress, a blue cardigan. She was badly injured and bleeding very badly from a, an accident in Hincaster. Come into my office. He sat down and the doctor said, Mr. Burroughs, can you describe this young girl, please? Yes, she was about 20, 25 years old. Um, she had a white dress on, a blue cardigan, and terrible injuries to her side. She was bleeding very, very badly. The doctor's eyes widened. He reached down into the drawer and opened the drawer of his desk and brought out a Westmond County uh, magazine. A year ago tonight, a young girl was brought in. She was very badly injured and she'd been involved in an accident in Hincaster. Uh, we tried to save her life here in the department. Three doctors, we got blood to her, but she was bleeding so badly, she passed away. It seems, Mr. Burroughs, that somehow you've brought a ghost into the hospital. A haunting, haunting story. Our next story 
again comes from the beautiful old grey town of Kendal. It's not so much a ghostly tale, but it's certainly a tale of heroism and a tale that will touch your heart. Please follow me. Our next story is not really a haunting story, but it's certainly a very, very beautiful story of a very brave man called John Watton. John lived in this house way back in 1939. Now, John Watton was a British Army officer, born and bred here in Kendal. Uh, he was a shoe designer at the local shoe factory and was exceptionally good at designs and drawings. He was called up in 1939 and was a member of the BEF, the British Expeditionary Force, sent to France. In 1940, the Germans launched what's called Blitzkrieg, and he found himself in the rear guard defending Calais and Dunkirk. He was captured. He escaped no fewer than three times from his local Stalag and was then sent straight to the Category A prison, known simply as Kolditz. Now, John's skills were quite outstanding. He was a forger. His meticulous handiwork used to forge um, passports, German currency, etc., and he was exceptionally well liked at Kolditz. He made three attempts to escape from Kolditz but was captured on each occasion. And in 1945, he got back here to his native home of Kendal. However, in 1949, his children were very, very seriously ill. And you can see them all here. Now, the reason they're all here with John there is John was very, very concerned. They were all at the Westland County Hospital with terrible temperatures. I understand it was scarlet fever. John couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat, he couldn't drink. So what he did, he got a hammer and chisel and he chiseled his face here, then continued with the faces of all his children. In many ways, the children in the wall had become very much a Kendall tourist attraction. What I can tell you is the children did survive and so did John one of Kendall's most famous sons, a Kolditz escaper. For our next story, we're going to make our way into the town of Kendall. We are going to go to one of the oldest public houses in the town and talk about one of its most famous guests, a gentleman known simply as the Young Pretender, commonly known as Bonnie Prince Charlie. We'll make our way there straight away. There's nothing I like more than visiting an ancient public house. And there's no two ways about it. The Ring of Bells is an ancient public house. If these walls could talk, they would tell you some amazing stories. By far the most interesting story from the Ring of Bells for me personally is the story of the Jacobite Rebellion. What was the Jacobite Rebellion? It was basically an attempt to put a Catholic on the throne of England once again and restore Catholicism. Bonnie Prince Charlie arrived in the Outer Hebrides on the little island of Eriksay. He then made his way from Scotland down to England where he was joined by Catholic English troops that were all loyal to him and they set off. They burst through Carlisle, they came through Shap towards the town of Kendal where they were met by a very brave man, the Mayor of Kendal, Mr John Firth, who said take all the food, all the alcohol, all the snuff but please leave the women and girls alone. And this was agreed with. They then made their way down towards the south of England, straight towards the city of Derby, and they stopped in Derby. A fatal, fatal mistake. It could have been a fear of what lay ahead, or it could have been communication problems, but they stopped in Derby. And they made the fateful decision to come back up north. In the meantime, on the other side of the English Channel, the French are just waiting to invade. But the decision had been made. Now, as they made their way towards Kendal for the second time, the Jacobites were in no mood at all for um, uh, clemency. They took anything they wanted, they broke into public houses, they stole food, etc. But the mayor, Mr John Firth, for the second time, had evacuated the town of all the children and all the women. One family was left in the town, that was the Caridus family, and they're in the main town centre. 
Uh, they had 12 children. Their youngest daughter was called Jean Caridus and they forgot to take her with her. She wasn't evacuated from the house. Uh, she was left sleeping upstairs. When the family got to the outskirts of Kendall, they realised they had left her. In the meantime, the Jacobites entered the town of Kendall for the second time. She heard shouting downstairs. She made her way downstairs, opened the door and walked into the centre of the main street. When the Jacobites saw her, they immediately stopped and some started to kneel and pray. They believed she was none other than an angel. Um, she had a long white dress on, she had long blonde hair, beautiful blue eyes, and she looked like a typical angel. As a result, the Jacobites made their way to the side of the town and they joined Shapfell from outside the town. Jeannie, of course, became a hero. And there was a public house named after her, called none other than the Angel of Kendall, Jeannie Caridus. What I find amazing about this public house, the Ring of Bells, is on that very, very first visit, way back in uh, August of that year, Bonnie Prince Charlie made his way into this very room, in front of this very window where I'm sitting, and made his bed here. He also declared himself King of England in the town of Kendall, and you could say that this was really his first invasion of England. Now, one of the locals in the bar uh, made fun of the prince. The prince was about to have him taken outside and executed when the landlord, John Wiseman, uh, managed to have a word with him and said, look, he has learning difficulties. And the prince decided to forget about the whole situation.